Hello, I'm Henry T. Welcome to KZQ Channel 32, the show we call Be Inspired with Henry T. This is a show about inspiration. Many times over, New Mexico Sportscaster of the Year. Yeah, it's been, it's been a good ride, man. You know, like, that's been good to me. I'll, I'll tell you, the first day that I got elected Secretary of State, my group, the first thing we did was say a prayer right out the door. About people who have overcome great obstacles in life to achieve their dreams. No one's going to give me anything. It's not going to be handed to me on the platter, so anything I have to get, I have to earn it. Who have become role models for others. So when I grew up, I knew that there would be a time that I would have to give back to the community somehow. Those who have gone on to be the best they can be and to inspire. 16,000 people watched Jim Holzman and his Bulldogs win the state championship. This man has been the head coach at Albuquerque High for 22 years. Hello again, I'm Henry T. And I have got butterflies and I'm nervous, preoccupied, because I get that way, ladies and gentlemen. I just have something really exciting to share with you. Man, I'm shaking like a leaf on a fuzzy tree. And today, all of that describes Henry T. Because today I have somebody that you really want to get inspired by. Born and raised here. I met him when he was 10 years old. I was out of college and I was in my profession. And I met him and his younger brother, Clint, having a little argument out at Ladera Golf Course. And it wasn't about his sport that he loved so much. It was about lunch. <laughs> Mom made you a better lunch than he made than she made me. And then when they were finished with lunch, he got his golf club out and started drilling the white ball straight down the fairway and Clint the same way. He went from that moment he was 10 years old to an international famous athlete, celebrity, communicator. Now he's a broadcaster at the highest level of sports. You know him well, Noda Begay. Noda, I could go all day long <laughs> with the resume. How wow, are you? Wow, I forgot a lot about that. I forgot a lot about a few of those things there. And my brother and I haven't stopped fighting since. We uh, <laughs> we still get at get at each other now and again. But those are some very fond memories. Don Zamora and Nett out at Ladera giving me that opportunity to pursue golf. And gosh. I would have never have known that it would have taken me to the places and to meet some of the people and had a lot of the opportunities that I've had, but it's been quite a ride. And my son and I, we followed you and Clint many times on the fairway, and you lived in your backyard to the golf course. You go hop the fence. We, where did they go? Where did they go? And we discovered that's home right there. But early on, this is an inspirational show. We know where you've been, your accomplishments of late. Who inspired you and told you and sold you on the fact that you could be, quote, somebody, that you could be great at something? You know, the interesting thing about inspiration and motivation and focus is, especially as it relates to my development as a young athlete, I mean, I love to play everything. I mean, through... Uh, my younger years, I played baseball and, and soccer, basketball, golf, and skied in the wintertime. There wasn't anything that my father didn't expose us to. And I'm thankful for that because you really never know what a young person's going to engage themselves with, uh, what's going to pique their curiosity and get them entrenched in sort of becoming good at something. And for me, it was golf. But the focus that I maintained was facilitated by my coaches, my parents, and um, parents of my friends. I mean, I didn't have a traditional upbringing. I, we moved around a lot in the Albuquerque area. My wife gives me a hard time because we'll be in different parts of town. I'm like, oh, I used to live there. I used to live here. And it was quite of a nomadic upbringing, so to speak. So a lot of my stability and motivation and encouragement came from my friends' parents. And so it was kind of this team effort of coaches, parents, teachers that sort of helped instruct me in academics, which is an absolute must at the Albuquerque Academy, and 
really served me well at Stanford. And I graduated with an economics degree and now broadcast for NBC Sports and try and use all of those different experiences and all those assets to work on my own businesses, be a father, a husband, but also be a community advocate for the people of New Mexico. Wow. And you're so ready, prepared, but not by so much practice of being, you know, ready for the moment. You just have, I don't know if it's innate gift from God or just your ability to be conscientious of your speech, how eloquent you are, because I think that's your greatest attribute. Great athlete, I'll put it on the green six inches from the cup, Henry, but man, put me in a spelling bee or a competition of eloquence and to articulate our, ang our language, you'll beat us all. <laughs> Where did that come from? Just being around some really neat people. I mean, from my, my father and mother who spoke two different languages, my mom is is fluent in the Pueblo language, Karis. My dad is fluent in the Navajo language and businessmen that have started Fortune 500 companies and are billionaires and seeing how they conduct themselves. And it's not so much the language, the vocabulary, or how you put words together, but it's the communication that's important, Henry. I think that so much is lost between teachers and students parents and children that they're raising through lack of communication. And part of communication is listening. And that's one thing that I always work on is to try and be a better listener. Mm. Because if we listen to the concerns of our children, of um, some of our at-risk youth, you're going to hear some of the solutions to the problems within those discussions. And so communication is the forefront at what I try and do through television, through community advocacy, and through the work I do in business. If somebody can't understand the concept that you're trying to pitch them, or they can't put together the thoughts around your ideas, everyone's going to move backwards or sideways. And backwards or sideways isn't progress. Let's go back to just the sport itself that you're immediately associated with when they say, they see your photograph, oh, great golfer. And then now, of course, great television commentator. Those two, but it's still the same sport, golf. What was it about the game way back when I first met you at 10 years old? What was it about the game that was so compelling to you? It was me and the course. It was me and the ball. And I think that in a lot of instances, which, which is why I'm such a huge proponent of youth sports, is that I feel like sports can ground a young person, can provide them an outlet to release their anxieties, to release their frustrations, to release sort of some of the emotional hardship that is a part of growing up. And for me, it was golf. And I could go out there and I could just put my headphones on and just pound balls all day. And that was a way for me to stay focused. That was a, a way for me to get away from some of the, you know, uh, coming from a, a broken home, divorced parents, and things weren't always uh, great at home. And you give yourself a chance to have an outlet. And I think that extracurricular activities is vital to the nurturing of our young, young children. And I think that it's a mistake for a lot of these school systems because of costs, because of test scores, whatever those circumstances may be, that they are eliminating elements of physical education and physical activity because that's part, and science has proven this, of brain stimulation and growth for these young kids. So from early on, Academics at the highest level, academy, where Academia USA exists, <laughs> nothing really intimidated you. Not very much that I knew anyway. The challenges of athletics came natural. Articulation, as we just spoke about, the incredible classes that you were mandated to take at the academy, you're right there. 
you're at the highest level of accomplishment. None of those challenges intimidated you. Why? Well, I, I wouldn't, maybe it didn't seem like it, but I was intimidated. I was scared at times. I was overcome with the, the greatness of, of the moment, whether it was shooting free throws in the state championship or playing the state soccer final, um, trying, to, trying to win those events. There's always pressure. There's always the, the moment that sort of either, either it's either going to make you or it's going to break you. And I always felt like preparation alleviates stress. So the more prepared you are, the better you practice every repetition. And that's where my golf translated into our success as a basketball team with Mike Brown at the helm at the Albuquerque Academy and Greg Brown, his son, as, the, as the, our key point guard. But we had a group of young men that wanted to put the time in mm -hmm. and were willing to put the repetition in. And that's what preparation is. It's having a strategy. Everybody knew what offense we were going to run. Everybody knew what we were going to do throughout the course of the game. We just did it better than they expected. And that's how we were able to achieve success on the basketball court. We won uh, two state championships in a row, the first of six in a row for Mike Brown, which is, is quite an accomplishment. And all of that success in team sports translated into success in in the sport that I chose to go play in college, which was golf. And I just always felt like the moment is either going to make you or it's going to break you. And I would rather be on the make me side than the Amen. break me side. <laughs> and with that, I was going to compliment you very sincerely about composure. Every great athlete doesn't have extreme composure, calm, standing over a $400,000 putt. Most people fall over with fright, heart attack, stroke, whatever. You're out there like a walk in the park. Bang, 400 grand. What's that like? Well, it's, uh, it's quite an experience, actually. I mean, my first winner's check was just over, I believe, $560,000. And as a 26-year-old kid growing up here in Albuquerque and never quite pondering what that meant, um, it, it was a pretty big event in my life. And it came down to just being ready for that moment, practicing time and time again walking through those situations with yourself. How are you going to maintain your focus? How are you going to stay calm? How are you going to breathe? How, how are you going to go through the small steps of preparation leading up to the shot? The most challenging part about golf, which sort of differentiates it from other sports, is there's such a long, such long moments in between shots where this starts to get in your way. Whereas the fluidity of basketball and football where things are fluid and, and things are in motion, everything's moving and you're sort of dependent on a pass or the dribble or creating your own different opportunity um, keeps, keeps you focused on the task at hand. Whereas golf, if you hit it six feet from the hole, you know it's a hard putt. You've got 10 minutes before you even walk up and are able to evaluate that putt, which allows all the doubts and the fears and the anxieties to kick in. And so I think it's one of the main reasons why you see so many athletes in retirement, the Brian Erlachers, who, who is a wonderful football player here, um, great friend of mine. But you see these guys, they just, they love golf because it's, it's hard, it's, it challenges you. What a great answer. Ladies and gentlemen, there's more to talk about with Notre Brigade. The trip to Stanford where he got his education and the degrees at Stanford, boy, they're well respected. Where he's been in big time competition, his present role as a broadcaster with the Golf Channel. All of that and more, and we'll talk about his foundation. Woo, how are we gonna get that in? But we will. Stay right there. This is Henry T. and Notre Brigade. This is KAZQ Channel 32.
Big T, we better hurry, because like I told you, his resume is this long, and I'm going to go right to the opportunity to get an education at Stanford. Wow! How did it happen? The golf coach at the University of Mexico at the time, John Fields, who I had become friends with since I was a junior golfer and was basically winning every tournament in the state of New Mexico, had offered me a full scholarship as a sophomore in high school when I was playing at the academy. And I looked him in the eye and said, Coach, I really want to thank you for thinking of me in, in that light and giving me this opportunity, but I'm not going to go to the University of New Mexico because I need to leave my comfortable surroundings where I need to see how good I am. And at the time, the Pac-10 was the toughest golf conference in America. Mickels, Phil Mickelson was playing there and so many other great players that had come through the pro, pro system started in the Pac-10 at the time. And what does John Fields do? And who's one of my dear friends to this day? He's now the coach at University of Texas. He calls Wally Goodwin at Stanford mm. because he understood the academic requirements wow. of the academy. He understood that there was a good chance that I could qualify to gain admission into Stanford. So he calls Wally Goodwin. I take all my board scores. And again, we're going back full circle to the people that had an influence on my life. So initially, the verbal element of my SAT scores wasn't high enough. And so instead of backing down from the challenge, because I had other scholarship offers, I said, I really want to go to Stanford because of the opportunity. It's a great school. It's in a great conference. I can play there right away. I really need to get in. So I went to my soccer coach, Bruce Musgrave at the time, at the Albuquerque Academy, was also the head of the English department. And I said, Coach, I need you to coach me, but not in soccer. I need you to coach me to get ready for this SAT test because I'm going to retake it in 90 days. Wow. So I would show up at school 6, 6.30 in the morning, and he'd, he would work me through wow. drills. He would work me through all of the different requirements of the SAT test. And I would carry note cards in my back pocket all day. And at, any, at, at every, any open moment, and my friends made fun of me because we we're in our senior year. You're supposed to be having fun. But I had this singular goal of getting into Stanford and competing at Stanford. And 90 days later, I take the test, and I get the required number to mm -hmm. gain admission into Stanford. And so I have Bruce Musgrave. Um, my soccer coach and a good friend of mine to thank for that and everyone else who just sort of supported me and encouraged me at the academy to pursue a, a higher level of education and that's what I got at Stanford. Wow. When you came here for the annual tournament at the University of New Mexico, we had a big crowd out there. There's no doubt. And who's that other guy there that's hitting great shots? Uh, a name who's become affiliated with you as your best friend, internationally famous and plus, they even know him up there in Mars and Jupiter. Who am I talking about? Tiger Woods, the Amen. one and only. Wow. And, and that's not reaching. That's literally true. You guys are best friends, very, very close friends. Can you share the story? Absolutely. Uh, when Tiger was nine years old, we were both playing in the World Junior Championships in Southern California. And my brother and Tiger are the same age, and my, so they were in the same age group. So I went over to watch my brother, and I heard, wow, this Tiger Woods kid's out here. I want to go watch him. And I see this young boy, African-American boy, and I'm Native American. My brother's Native American, and there weren't very many other uh, dark people in this event. And so I went up, introduced myself, and I said, hey, I'm Noda Begay, and we're going to be best friends. And from that point on, we were great friends. And we've been through everything, the scandals, the successes, wow. the, the marriages, the everything that you can think of. We've sort of stood by each other and supported each other and tried to be there for each other in whatever capacity possible. We had started our families about the same time. His two kids, his daughter, six months older than my daughter, his son, six months older than my son. So we have a lot of parallels, and we just, in our older age, we chuckle about all the things that we, we used to sort of, the trouble we used to get into and all the fun that we had. 
playing the PGA Tour and playing a sport for a living. And now um, he's sort of in this sort of re rejuvenation of his career. I'm in this new element of television. And we still give each other 100 support and want to 100 percent support and want to see each other do well. And that's what a good friendship is. And we've been lucky to have it for quite some time. You're as confident. He relies on you. <laughs> he relies on your critiques and your analysis of personal things or golf things. Gee, and it's interesting, your stories, when you tell us about what you two confide in. Remarkable. You should write a book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've, we've uh, seen a lot of things together, and we are able to be very candid with each other, which is good. That's any good friendship. You need to be able to tell each other the truth. And when I think that there are certain things that sort of he may want to reevaluate, I, I tell him. And it's um, sometimes not always the most comfortable conversation, but we get through it. We've gotten through a lot, and, and we've still managed to be very close and, mm -hmm. and stand by, by each other's side to this day. Wow. A winner on the PGA Tour. He's had magical moments as an athlete. Television, it comes so naturally to you on the Golf Channel. Yeah, that was something that was unexpected. Nobody ever plans for the end of their sports career. We all plan for the beginning. We all plan for the success. We all plan for what we're going to do with all the money we make. And unfortunately, it all has to come to an end. And it did for me. I just got to a point where my injuries, my back injuries that I had sustained at right around 2000, just got a little bit too hard to overcome and were really having a detrimental impact on my performance. And I get a call from Tommy Roy, executive sports producer for NBC Golf, and he said, I would really love to give you a try on our network. And I come to find out nobody makes the start in network right away. You usually work your way up through a local affiliate or through cable or whatnot. And I, I got thrown right into the fire and television is the fire. I mean, I got a lot of respect for you, Henry. I mean, it's, it's no bowl of cherries. It's not an easy, an easy thing to do. And you guys make it look so easy. And I've learned through the years that you just kind of got to find your style and utilize uh, the moments and be able to evaluate the moments. And again, communicate what people are seeing. People don't need to be told what they're seeing because they can see it. Okay, it's not radio. You and I have done a lot of radio together. Radio, you need to be a little bit more expressive and, and, and try to give them a visual image of what's going on. They can see what's happening. My job is to tell them what they can't see, what players are feeling, wow. what they're thinking, what, what the ball may, may or may not do when it comes off the club face how they have reacted in previous situations, which is why you have to study the players that you're covering, is so that if you know that on holes that are dogleg to the right, that this player has a tendency to miss in the left fairway, those are the things you bring up. And it's been fun you miss sometimes. And live television is a bear. I mean, you make a lot of mistakes. And in the past, Nobody would really care about the mistakes, but now with social media, you hear about it right away, which is, it's a double-edged sword. People write in, they, they tweet, they Facebook, they Instagram about what they like about you, but on the other side of the coin, they do the same about what they don't like about you. Yeah. Trivia, ladies and gentlemen. He's been interviewed eight million times. Who interviewed Noda the very first time in his career? His very first interview. Answer the trivia, Nona. As the one and only Henry T. <laughs> <laughs> Standing beside a green at Ladera Golf Course. Lights are on, Nona. Young man, 10 years old. Calm, cool, collective, and eloquent. And that was amazing for me. And then you, I was the catalyst, you know, to remember. You started it all, Henry. You started I mean. winning tournaments left and right every age. You needed to hire a new carpenter to make you another <laughs> cabinet for all those trophies and that big case. I mean, your, your career has just flowed into spectacular from my vantage point. If you evaluate your career, your family, your beautiful wife, your opportunities today, 
What kind of evaluation do you give for all of that? I would say what it comes down to is the relationships. I mean, the money comes and goes, the fame comes and goes. People care about you one day, they don't care about you tomorrow, but it's the relationships, the friendships, the, the friendships I have. I, I volunteered assistant coach for um, the younger Greg Brown when he was at Manzano. Mm -hmm. I stay in touch with his brother Danny and, and their father Mike. Mm. And all of my high school friends, Dr. David Moore, who I played high school soccer with, is a, still yeah. an extremely close friend of mine. And now he's the head orthopedic surgeon for the Tennessee Titans. He's doing wonderful things in his field. My and goodness. Tiger Woods and Casey Martin and my coaches, I still talk to them on a regular basis because I'm aware that those friendships and those relationships are tough to come by. You're a country interest father, country interest husband. You've got challenges galore. But let me ask you the question maybe no one asked you today. Your future, what do you see? Continue to advocate for the people of New Mexico. I, I feel like we're always the last dog to the bowl. We're the ones that are getting headlines for the wrong reasons. And I feel like there's a certain element of um, negativity that is permeating through our communities. And it's either you, you know, you, you stand up and, and take, a, take the initiative to make a difference. Wow. And that's what I continue to do and be a good father, be a good husband, and good brother and a son. Those are all things that are important to me. I'm going to take an extra minute for my producer and director, Lance, and I'm going to ask you about helping out a school the other day, Osuna Elementary School. They had a fire. All their equipment got damaged. Out of nowhere, you come with a big heart and your foundation to try to aid them. Can you share that so our audience will get so intrigued? They, too, will want to help. Yeah, so the MB3 Foundation has really focused on the importance of health and wellness and fitness for our young kids. And so one of the things that we've built and have understood around our work is that safe play spaces like playgrounds, basketball courts, parks, bike paths, those are integral to our kids maintaining a high level of health. And when I saw this poor... Uh, the school that just had an extremely tragic vandalism that took place on their property. I just got, I got to help. And so up to this point, you know, we've raised uh, over $5,000. Wow. And so hopefully we're going to get more. So if anybody out there wants to get involved, you can go to at NoDeBegay3, which is my Twitter account, or you can go to mb3foundation.org and figure out a way to... Uh, make a contribution to this effort. We're going to uh, enhance the existing um, playground structure, APS, and their insurance is going to cover most of it. But anything else that they want to add on and make it bigger or better, so we're going to pitch in for that. Wow. Noda, what a joy. Thank you it's been for being fun. here today. My honor. Thank we're going to have to do it again because there's a shelf full of questions yet to be asked. Absolutely. So we'll do it again. Can't wait. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That'll do it today. Wow, what a moment for me as a professional, you as a viewer, I'm shaking. Man, that was good. I'm Henry P. Note of a K. This is KZQ, Channel 32. You got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here. Be inspired with Henry T. 8 o'clock on KZQ, Channel 32.